artificial intelligence. Is it marketing or is the real substance behind it? Well, it's a little bit of both. Marketing certainly has got a hold of artificial intelligence and everything today is AI. Let's dig into this a little bit. I really do believe that this is an arms race. And I heard this recently that there's going to be three types of cybersecurity companies. There's going to be companies with large amounts of data with no algorithms. There's going to be companies with small amounts of data with algorithms. And then there's going to be companies with large amounts of data and mature algorithms. And so Cisco is really well positioned here when it comes to AI for a variety of factors, one of which is intelligence. So if we look at it, we've got roughly 550 billion security events per day. I know this is chest pounding stuff, but it is a reality based on the presence that Cisco has today in the market from network to endpoint to cloud to email to DNS, and it goes on. Plus they have intelligence coming in from open source technologies. There's roughly 9 million emails blocked per hour. There's 2000 new samples a minute, and then there's 2000 domains blocked per second. And it's not just about collecting that data, but actually doing something with it. So we've got our primary and second sources of threat intel, which includes product telemetry. There's it's very prevalent out in the marketplace today. Talos incident response engagements. There's lots to learn here. Vulnerability research. We got intelligence partnerships, cutting edge threat research, and we even got honeypots and spam traps that are located and distributed globally around the world. And again, some a little bit more chest pounding here. Cisco sees roughly or discovers roughly 200 plus vulnerabilities discovered per year. There's 60 plus government and law enforcement partnerships and 45,000 critical infrastructure endpoints monitored in Ukraine. Cisco Talos played a huge role back in the day with MeDocs. Now, again, you can't do this with human strength alone. You need machines. And so we've got new or novel noteworthy threats and known and common threats that feed into machine learning and automation. We continue to mature those models. We also complement that with security research and malware analysis and obviously distribute that across the portfolio of capabilities that Cisco supports. We've got things like machine learning engineers, malware reverse engineers, dedicated email, web, DNS, and endpoint threat research to help tie this all together, deep and dark web analysis. And we support 46 plus languages because threats don't only come in English. It's all about raising the bar for defenders everywhere. And so we've got those products, whether it's reputation, categorization, detection content, customer intelligence, enhanced context, emergency bulletins and notification, proactive IR services, and then information sharing. It's all about the community here. Threat research and vulnerability publishing. We've got a couple of programs customers can certainly take advantage of and industry partnerships. Now enough of the chest pounding type stuff. Let's talk a little bit about artificial intelligence models and tools. And so we've got artificial neural networks, and these are models designed to mimic the human brain's behavior, recognizing patterns and making decisions. This would be speech, image, and natural language processing. Convolutional neural networks, a type of artificial neural network, primarily used in image processing. It extracts features like edges, shapes, and textures, and is dominant in computer vision. Then you got recurrent neural networks. So these, again, are in line with artificial neural networks. They're used for data where sequence matters like time series analysis or language processing. This particular model can also remember and generate text or predict the future. Generative adversarial networks comprised of two neural networks, a generator and a discriminator generates synthetic data that mimics real data. It can create realistic images, texts, and sounds. Decision trees. Use tree-like graph to make decisions. Each node in the tree represents a test on an attribute. Each branch represents the outcome. And each leaf node represents a decision. 
And then you get support vector machines. These SVMs are supervised learning models used for classification and regression analysis. Reinforcement learning models. An agent learns to behave in an environment by performing actions to maximize some notion of cumulative reward, commonly used in gaming and robotics. And then transformers, we got mainly used in natural language processing. Transformers deal with sequence data like sentences, but unlike recurrent neural networks, they can process the entire sequence simultaneously and carry information from any part of the sequence to another. And then you've got Bayesian. The AI models are used when everything is uncertain and contingent. These models help us revise our beliefs based on what is observed. So these are some of the models and tools that are available. Now, whatever's available for the defender is certainly available to the adversary. And if you look at fraud GPT, this is an example of it. Open API without the guardrails. It's funny because I recently went on chat GPT, for example, and said, hey, wait a minute. Why don't you tell me how I invest $1,000 and grow it to 10,000? And it certainly told me that it cannot give me any financial advice and help me through that journey, but it certainly can program a PowerShell script if I need it to do that. But I'm not going to get rich off of uh, investing in finance. Fraud GPT phishing scams enables an adversary the ability to create authentic looking phishing emails or text messages. You get social engineering that mimics human conversation. The, the goal here is to lure them in and have a level of trust. Malware distribution, enticing messages, encouraging its victims to download attachments and malwares or click a link. You've got fraudulent activities, provides the adversary to create fake documents or counterfeited invoices to dupe organizations or high targeted individuals to make payments. So when we look at phishing attacks, there's tools like Deep Instinct and phishing.ai. They use deep learning to identify phishing attempts. And again, malicious actors can also use similar technology to create phishing attacks. Credential stuffing. So various botnet and scripts can be used here. Tools like Selenium, Puppeteer, and Python Scrappy are widely used in illegal scraping, but can be maliciously deployed for credential stuffing. You got AI-generated deep fakes. Libraries like DeepFace Lab or FaceSwap are often used to generate deepfake videos. You got AI-powered malware. So this involves the use of machine learning frameworks like TensorFlow and others that are self-modifying or AI-infused malware. Social engineering, basic natural language processing, uses machine learning models and can be utilized to automate social engineering. You got bypassing CAPTCHA. So OpenCV, a machine learning algorithm often used to train models to bypass CAPTCHA systems. And then automated vulnerability detection, machine learning frameworks and data mining tools that can be used to automatically identify vulnerabilities in a system. Don't worry, it's not the end of the world, but it certainly feels that way right now. So we've got this evolution in cybersecurity, the expanding attack surface from brute force to malware to zero day to ransomware to extortion to AI and cybercrime. And then you've got the evolution of cybersecurity solutions from 1990 to antivirus, God, we've come a long way, to firewalls in 2000 to endpoint security in 2010. And then you get into AI uh, security, both advanced detection and next generation antivirus in 2020 and today now we're looking at gen ai for cybersecurity and some other capabilities like passwordless and risk assessments and security awareness so when we look at artificial intelligence technologies we've got large language models which includes things like chat gpt specializing in understanding and generating human like text you got generative ai that aims to generate new data or text that mirrors the input Deep learning aims to mimic the human brain to interpret data such as images, sound, and text. Machine learning focuses on learning from data. And then you got AI, aims to mimic the human behavior. So now when we look at those models again, let's overlay this from a defender's perspective. And I'm going to use the acronyms here. So ANNs, 
They can be used to develop intrusion detection systems that learn to identify abnormal traffic patterns and flag potential cyber threats. And these are just examples. CNNs, not the news network, they can process images and capture verifications, proving useful against bot attacks, attempting to crack these security measures. You got RNNs. They're implemented in email filters that check sequences of words and letters to flag and filter out potential phishing emails. You got GAINS, which can simulate cyber attacks in controlled environment, allowing cybersecurity professionals to test their systems, identify vulnerabilities, and plan their defenses. You got decision trees. They can categorize network traffic and user behavior into benign and malicious based on predefined conditions, aiding in quick detections and possible threats. We see this as well with files, looking at benign and malicious files and determining which one might be uh, a malicious intent, even though we may never have seen it before. Support vector machines, so SVMs. They classify network traffic to identify potential intrusions, separating trusted activities from malicious ones in high dimensional activity data. You got reinforcement learning models. They can be used in adaptive systems, learning and improving security protocols based on each interaction to continually enhance system safety, transformers, they can analyze system logs, identify patterns, and detect anomalies in sequence to flag potential security incidents. And then you get Bayesian models. They can be used with spam filters by taking into account the evidence of observed words. They can calculate the probability that an incoming email is in fact spam. So these are some high-level examples of how defenders can leverage AI. And so in 2017, we had predictive AI analyzing existing data that can be used for predictions and automation. And then we moved into generative AI in 2022. And this is where now we're learning a representation of artifacts from data and using it to generate original artifacts based on predicted sequences of information from a given prompt. We're going to dig into this a little bit. And here's a little bit of the hype cycle. Not going to spend a whole lot of time here. But certainly AI is the focus for every cybersecurity defender out there. All right, so what is Cisco doing in this space? We got AI powered detections today. We've broken up the portfolio into breach, user and cloud protection. And so you can see as an example in breach protection, we've got XDR risk scores based on neural networks. We've got Talo signature generation with auto machine learning. On user protection, we've got email threat defense that's allowing us to advance our ability to detect threats that are very difficult to detect with normal security gateways. We also have anomaly detection in the industrial processes. We've got umbrella with neural networks and supervised machine learning capabilities. So then we have cloud protection, which has vulnerability management risk scores. This is both for vulnerability management and vulnerability intelligence. And so when we drill into this a little bit deeper, you can see, I'll give a couple examples. User behavior, we're doing risk-based authentication. Detection, we've got Talos deep learning or large language models being used in email threat defense. Prioritization. We have XDR with natural language processing for understanding loss patterns. We've also got XDR Bayesian risk models for incident loss. And then response recommendation, we've got user action prediction algorithms from historical telemetry and action recommendation based on similar user event clusters. And then classifications. So real-time machine learning classifiers for techniques and malware families. You got large language models. You've got behavioral based clusters for identifying user roles. All right, let's talk about Cisco Security AI Assistant. Now, this is Cisco XDR. And on the right side, where you see the red, this is the attack chain. And we might have asked the AI Assistant what endpoints were affected by this malicious file. And it does its work and it says this, and these are the number of endpoints. You can see four here. And there were four user accounts also associated with that SHA, and it was emailed to individuals. So we've got some relationships between an email, endpoints, and user very, very quickly. And then it also suggests, how do you want me to address this incident? 
and and it gives an example of what maybe the outcome could be and it could be as simple as quarantine the compromised system let's assume the ai assistant within the xdr allows an admin to request a firewall rule to be added now it's determined that there's some phishing attack that has set up a cnc server that is exfiltrating data outside the network and so we want to block that ip and so what can happen here is from there the assistant again could show us the policies that may be relevant to the thing that we're interested in and where we may invoke that control to block any outbound exfiltration to that ip address and then from there there might be a further suggestion that further suggestion might be hey you might also want to consider to lock that affected user out of any critical applications and it'll go into your multi-factor authentication platform like cisco duo and execute that change to lock the user out of certain critical applications now you might want to ask it more questions about the particular outcome here but you get the idea now this is an example of xdr detecting a phishing attack with cnc and exfiltration of data and the ai assistant saying we probably want to block the ip address in a control point then you ask the AI assistant, what rules could I associate this block in instead of creating a net new one? And so we're going to leverage Cisco Defense Orchestrator. And then finally, we're going to lock out that user from critical applications levering, leveraging Cisco Duo. Now, we also are looking at Cisco Firewall AI policy. Now, this has to understand the prompt in human language. It generates the SQL identify a response and generate a natural language reply so in this case you can see that we're asking the ai assistants what are the rules in the point of sale policy and the cisco assistance comes back and it says there's a total of five rules and it keeps it simple it says there's github outbound ssh ip phones outbound web traffic point of sale and 0365 each of these rules serve a specific purpose within the policy to ensure smooth and secure transaction. Just think where we can take this. First, we're asking a question to give us clarity, and then we can take it even further to take action. All right, encrypted visibility engine. This is the power of machine learning and AI being built into Cisco Secure Firewall. Now it has the ability to determine if there's threats in the organization without having to decrypt it. So TLS cert pinning and QUIC are two areas of encryption that you cannot use TLS proxy or man in the middle, person in the middle. You want to identify client applications, operating systems, compromised hosts, destinations. Uh, you're going to use fingerprints across computer security incident response teams, our network visibility module and also samples that we've uh, seen in the past with secure malware analytics and come up with a determination with high levels of efficacy that traffic that's traversing the environment is in fact malicious. Whether that be ransomware, whether that be data exfiltration, we're gonna highlight that with a confidence score to give you a heads up that malicious traffic is in, in fact in the environment without burdening the performance of the platform by performing TLS proxy when it's not needed. We've got some other capabilities here as well to further optimize TLS proxy and discovery of malicious intent without having to decrypt. Now the new era of email threats requires AI security and recently uh, or more recent Cisco acquired a company called Armor Blocks. It focuses purely on large language models uh, and certainly well suited uh, in the email threat space for advanced threats. So these are things like VIP impersonations, payroll fraud, vendor fraud, credential phishing and account takeover. This is where legacy email controls have failed and where AI is certainly starting to shine. And what's interesting is, is now we can take identity, we can build identities of senders based on signals from domains, SMTP servers, 
receive from headers, client information, and more. We've got language, understanding contextual communication patterns from extracting asks, requests, urgency, discovering fraud, financial and compliance risk, and behavior. And if you look at the image at the very top there, it says urgent user. And then as I'm reading, I am traveling, have a customer lunch meeting tomorrow. We then flag that with urgency. Unfortunately, I forgot my corporate. And then it goes on to say, can you please share your credit card details by tonight? Again, flagged with urgency. You can reimburse financial expenses, financial. And so we've classified this as impersonation because Josie Fisher does not usually send emails from that particular email. We also see Josie Fisher is suspicious users requesting payment with a sense of urgency and a deadline, so fraud risk. And only one email has been exchanged between that particular email and the uh, recipient until today. So a low communication history. So based on those multiple factors, we're able to determine that this is suspect and ultimately want to remove this risk. So that's a little bit about AI in general in the adversarial and defensive space, but also what Cisco is doing around AI. It's not a marketing term for Cisco. It is applied science with real data scientists behind the scenes, building these incredible models that we're seeing come to fruition today. Thank you.